I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, peoples? How you doing? It is a great day, and I'm so very excited to have my next guest on the show. You know, some people are watching this show for the very first time on a different platform, and I want to welcome you. And thank you guys so much. This is the author's interview edition for Dream Chasers Radio, and we have amazing authors here that have amazing books, and they and their books are just, they range from anywhere from children's books all the way to real science fiction to fiction to biographies, autobiographies, memoirs. So, I mean, you know, you can find it all right here. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Another book today with author Brenda Jenkins. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. So tell me, how did you, how did you get started? What, what was the one thing that triggered you to, to know that you wanted to write a book? Well, um, I'm a retired educator. I retired as an elementary school principal. So children have always been a big part of my life. Um, but what really started my journey as an author was 2011 in November. Well, in 2011, my sister challenged me to walk a three day, 60 mile Susan G. Komen walk to support breast cancer. And I'm thinking 60 miles. Oh my gosh. She's 60 not, miles. Yes, ma'am. In three days. That's 20 thought, miles wait, wait, every wait, day. Wait, wait. I thought you said 30 miles. You said no. 60. Right. Three days, 20 miles each day. Oh my and I'm gosh. Thinking, my sister is nine years younger than me, but hey, me you can do it. I wasn't going to let her beat me out. <laughs> <laughs> so I agreed to do it. Well, when you're walking 20 miles a day, um, you have to get you have to build up to that. You have to train. So I live in the country and I started training on these um, lonely, long dirt roads out here in the country. And when I built up to walk in several hours at a time, I, I was really bored. I was so bored. And I thought, I just can't do this. It was driving me crazy. So I started making silly rhymes about my grandson. His name is Trip, and he calls me Guinea, like guinea pig. Okay. Yeah. And so I was writing, making these silly rhymes up in my head just to have something to keep my mind occupied. Um, I'd say things like when he was a little guy, sometimes he would cry and Guinea would hold him and sing a lullaby. It's just silly things like that. So time went on and I um, was able to walk the walk with my sister. We went to San Diego, California and walked in the walk. Wow. And it was the most, one of the most overwhelming experiences in my life. I was blown away by the passion and the determination of thousands of people walking together for one cause. Um, the support of the community there was fabulous. The streets were always lined with people cheering us on, giving us little treats, giving us water. Some people gave out shots. <laughs> I didn't have any, but... <laughs> um, and then the most inspiring thing, I think, was the cancer patients or cancer survivors that were participating. There were women of all ages, like, like teenagers, um, mothers, daughters, grandmothers. Um, some were in the middle of their treatments and their hair was wrapped in bandanas. What, well, their head was wrapped in bandanas. There were even women in wheelchairs being pushed along. And... It was just amazing. It, it was just so inspiring to me. And looking back, I realized that that was a blessing to me because three months later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I know that God used that three day walk to give me the inspiration and the motivation I was going to need on my journey. So wow. um, I spent a total of nine months in surgeries, major surgeries and recoveries. And while I was recovering, you know, I, you never know what's coming in the future. And, you know, you never think you're going to hear the words, you have cancer. You then would get choked up. <laughs> and um, I was real worried about my grandson. Excuse me. Take your time. I was real concerned about how to explain cancer to a three-year-old and all of the things that come along with cancer. And I um, decided I wanted to preserve our memories. 
So I started writing them down and I polished them up. And I realized that a lot of the memories we have were things that we did outside of my front porch in my swing. So, excuse me. So my book is called The Swing on Ganny's Porch. <clears throat> and so I wrote down those rhymes and um, I, I thought, you know, I need to anticipate, you know, some of these questions he may ask. Well, I did. And he's such a sweet little fellow. He's, he's very considerate and kind and um, very expressive. And so I wrote down what I thought his responses would be. <clears throat> so I shared all this with friend, few friends and few family members, and they encouraged me to write it as a book. So I did, and I had it published. So writing those memories was a way to gift those memories to Trip, but having it published was a way to inspire and support others who may um, find this helpful or may um, be experiencing some of the same things. So I did have the book published and it's, it's really been a blessing. It's um, a blessing that came from a, a very challenging time in my life. Um, so I'm very proud of it. Um, it's not anything I ever planned on doing. And um, now that I'm 12 years cancer free, um, it's been, you know, it's, it's been a journey. It's, it's been amazing. Wow. Wow. What a turn of events. You know, I've lost in the past, I don't know, since 2019, I've lost really dear, dear people, friends and family mm -hmm. to cancer. And I mean, for you walking and then having to go through it. Mm -hmm. Wow. And yeah, well, how do you explain that to a three-year-old? I don't think they understand that. they would. I don't think that would go well. But I think what you did was you turned a negative into a positive. Mm -hmm. How did that make you feel as you wrote the book, as you understood what was going on in your life? How did it make you feel to actually be able to at least leave something for Tripp? Um. <clears throat> Well, he's 15 now. He got his learner's license today. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Um, oh, where are you located? Never mind. It's, you're not a Florida good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, he's grown. And as he was going through elementary school, um, I read the book many times to his classes and to um, auditoriums full of children at school. And I've, I've presented my story and my book to um, various ladies groups, some uh, church groups and some educator groups and some others in the community. And um, it's, you know, it, when, I, when I wrote it for Trip, it, it's been real special to us. He loves the book. He was a little embarrassed as he got older that he had a book written about him. <laughs> in fact, let me show you his picture. This is, um, can you see? Yeah. This Aww. is a picture of us in the swing when the book was published and we were reading the book in the swing. And he that looks like it. something out of like, you know, when you go and you buy the, the actual frame that looks yeah. like something out of the frame. Yeah. That is yeah. It's real special. So yeah. um, he loves it. And now I have two, I have twin grandchildren, a boy and a girl and they're five. And my daughter keeps saying, well, when are you going to write a book about them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to do the, do you got to do the whole I swing must. thing? I don't know. Maybe it'll come to me. <laughs> Oh, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Yeah. I'm so happy that you are cancer free. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Thank you. You know, it's something that you strive for. I know you went through a lot, you know, as you come out of that phase and you go into the writing phase and now you have the twins, what's on the agenda now? I know there might be another book, but mentally speaking, how are you progressing through your life? A lot of people, you know, hang tight and they're good and they're, and they're wonderful and they move forward. But some people, you know, they kind of mm -hmm. lag a little bit behind and the, the joy has been taken away from them. How did you get your joy back? Um, I think the most important thing was my faith. And after that would be my family and my friends, and my memories. You know, people will say, you know, to me, you never looked anxious. You never looked upset. You never, you never really acted like anything was wrong. And I, and I tried to, to do that. Um, but I really was joyful and I really had, you know, faith that everything was going to be okay. So that was um, the most, you know, the, I think what, what, what really got me through. And, and I could see, I could look back and I could see how that this chain of events took place and how that helped to strengthen me. 
so um yeah it, it was um it was it was a good experience it really was um I feel like I'm a stronger person a mm -hmm. stronger um mother and grandmother and and wife and um it's not anything I would wish on anybody of course but I feel like my experience was um turned into it's it's there's been quite a few blessings to come from it I hear you Right. Tell me about the book, The Swing on Jenny's Porch, on Guinea's Porch, right? Just Guinea. on Guinea's mm -hmm. Porch, Guinea's Porch. Yeah. Here's the book, The Swing on Guinea's Porch, and it is written from Tripp's point of view. Um, oh. Being close to children for most of my life, um, I kind of know what draws them to books. They like colorful pages. Here's some colorful pages. They like um, rhymes. Children love rhymes because that helps them to learn to read and to um, memorize the book and to feel like they're part of it. And they also learn, like um, books that have uh, a children's point of view because they can really identify with the characters. So do um, you mind if I read you a couple pages? I don't mind at all. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, the very first one turned into when I was young, Oh, excuse me. When I was very, very small, sometimes I would cry. My guinea would wrap me in a blanket and sing a lullaby in the swing on guinea's porch. And then on farther, some other things we did. Um, I love this one. Every day, a noisy train rushed by, clickety-clack. I'd name the colors of the cars red and silver and black in the swing on guinea's porch. And then um, I'll read you one more. The, the, the part about how to tell him about cancer. One day I, I went to see her and much to my surprise, a hat was where her curls had been and tears were in her eyes. I asked her where the hair had gone and why that hat was there. She said she sent her curls to heaven for little angels to wear. So that's kind of how I imagined telling him and how he would perceive it um, in a way that a three-year-old might, you know, not be upset and know that everything was be, would be okay. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said, now, Guinea, don't you worry when you're feeling blue, because now I'm big and I can sing a lullaby for you. And that's just exactly what he would have said in oh. the swing on Guinea's porch. So it's all about memories and family and how, um, how our experiences with, with family are so important and how that does help us in challenging times. Wonderful, wonderful. Do you, do you really um, think, and I, I think this, but do you think that this book may help another patient or someone who has breast cancer explain this to their young child, their young grandchild? I do, if they don't even, even if they don't really explain it the way I did, maybe because of my faith, it gives um, a, a starting point for conversations with children. Um, it also has a very grown up message, you know, of encouragement to um, people who face challenges and trials. So it's, it's a children's book with a grown up message. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do think it's, um, I have friends who have given these to, um, to friends of theirs who, have, who are facing hard times or illnesses. And um, it's, it's been a meaningful thing. Awesome. I want to thank you so very much for being on the show, Ms. Jenkins. I mean, it's been such a pleasure. What kind of a message do you leave to your readers today? Make memories. Make your memories. And hold I on. I love that. Them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two words. Make memories. Beautiful. <laughs> Gorgeous. Thank you so very much for being on the show. I'm going to have all of that information about the book, the swing on Guinea's porch in the description box, wherever you're watching below or side to the side above. I don't know where it's going to be, but wherever it is, go ahead and copy and paste that and put that in your browser if, if it's not highlighted so that you can go there and check out the book for yourself. And if you're going through a phase and you don't know how to explain something to your young child, your young grandchild, or whatever the case may be, someone young that, you know, you want to make sure that you can say it in the right way that doesn't really like you know, take them for a loop because they don't understand. You need to check out the book. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. And until next time, guys, bye.